how to get a free Google server forever. We're gonna open Google, type in Google Cloud Platform and head to the very first link. If you don't have an account, you can create one. Otherwise you can just sign in, check the terms and conditions and click agree. Move your mouse down to the like and subscribe button and click on both of them. We'll need a project to connect this to. If you're doing this for the first time, you need to create a brand new project. I'll do one right here. Once this is done, then we'll be able to access the compute section. So head over to the menu on the top left and select compute engine. Here we'll get the option to sign up for a free trial account. So we'll select this button here and we'll need to fill out a little bit of information about ourselves as well as some billing and accept the terms and conditions. Once this is all done, we're ready to go. We have $300 of credit, so let's use this instance and create something that costs us less than that. Technically, we can operate this without costing anything. We've got lots of different options here. We can select different regions to run the virtual machine in, and we've got different options in the series. I'm going to select the N1 series with a machine of F1 Micro, because this costs almost nothing per month. Let's have a look at the other options we have over here. We can select an operating system. So my personal preference here is Ubuntu. So I'm just gonna select to use that operating system on one of the latest versions. On top of that, we can select how much space is on the disk. My preference is to utilize all the maximum space you can, which in this case will be 30 gigs based on this tier. Finally, we'll select a couple of extra things, such as making sure that we have good firewalls, but also allowing HTTP and HTTPS as maybe a web server in the future. And that's it, we're up and running. We can now SSH into this machine to set up whatever we want, whether it's a database or a web server or a React app. We can connect up GitHub and we can even set up VS Code to work remotely on our mobile phone, which I've done a video up here for. But the main purpose here is to show you what's possible. The way this works is that it's under Google's free tier. We get lots of free credit to utilize every single month. I think it's about three or $400 worth. And this machine doesn't cost near anything like that. It means that we can operate it 24 seven indefinitely. And this is the main purpose here to show you what's possible. If this is your first time having a free online server, a cloud server, so to speak, let's have a look at some of the ways we can utilize it. The first thing you'll need to do is actually log into it. And with this, there's a few different options, but the easiest is to SSH straight into it. You can do this with your own SSH client, such as Putty, but I'm just going to use the Google browser here, which does about the same job. This will connect up and it'll pass through all the authentication that we need. So we don't have to worry about any of that. The first thing I'd like to be able to do here is to install NPM and Node because this is what I usually utilize when I'm doing web servers. So to do this, I'm just gonna jump over here and go install Node uh, Ubuntu. And here we'll get a nice tutorial on how to do that. I usually like to just go to the first link and have a look at some of the options. The easiest here is to just do an apt get or yeah, apt install node.js. So let's quickly do that. I'll open up our console here and I'll just do sudo apt install node.js. Uh, we might have to do an apt update. So I'm just gonna do that now. Let's do apt update. And here we can see that's not being permitted. Let's do sudo apt update. And now we're getting all our client packages and all the latest versions of them. Now that we've done that, we should be able to do our apt install of Node.js. So let's actually pull that across. I'm gonna open up the window over here. And here I'm just gonna do uh, our previous command, sudo apt install Node.js. And we can see that that's now working. So that's great. The other thing we need as well is npm. So let's set that up quickly. And it's mostly the same command, just apt install npm with sudo at the start. So sudo apt install npm. Great, so that's both done. And we can check the Node.js version simply by going to Node.js and tapping, typing in dash j. So let's do that as well and see what version we're operating hopefully one of the most recent ones, um, but I do know that they changed pretty quickly, uh, especially in this day and age. Okay, there we go. So we'll do Node.js-v. We've got version 4.2.6. Uh, let's just do a Node-v that also, oh, no, that doesn't work. That's legacy, ah, okay. And then let's do npm-v and our npm version is 3.5.2. So that's great. The next thing we can do now is have a look at possibly pulling in some packages. 
So personally, I like to have uh, my build tools ready before I do anything like that as well. So to get the build tools, because whenever you're creating a package or building it, you might have to utilize these, especially for any web development. Now uh, we'll just do the NPM, oh, sorry, we'll just do the app install for those. So let's browse back in here, do apt, oh, sudo apt install build essentials. Great, so that'll run off in the background. I think we missed something there. Uh, let's see, at sudo apt install build essentials. Oh, sorry, without the S. There we go. Um, and finally, a really useful tool to have on your server is NVM. NVM allows you to swap your version of Node at any time. There is a quick command here to install it. So I'm going to copy that across and hopefully I can paste that straight in here. I'm not too sure. Uh, I don't think I can, which really sucks, but that's okay. Great. So now that we're up and running, let's see if we can do a small web server. So maybe what I might do is uh, let's do web server express example, and we'll just have a look at a quick one from GitHub just to show that our server is in fact working. So I'm going to use this one here from Google. This seems like a, oh no, this one might not be a good one. I need one that I can do. This one runs on port 6,000. This one here, if we have a look at the repo, uh, it's running on port 3,000, depending on the ENV we're passing through. But I just want something really quick and simple. Let's have a look at this one over here. So this is Express. We could even do a quick version of Express here and test it out, I suppose. So let's oh, let's do that here. So this is an Express generator and we can create a quick website doing this. So I'm going to pull in our instance here and we're just going to go through the doco. So npm install dash g Express generator at version four. Once that's installed, we can call the generator. Uh, oh, that did not install very well. Let's have a look. Uh, missing write access. So we might have to do a sudo on that npm install dash g express generator at version four. And that should install it. So that looks like it's worked. And then we'll do express. Uh, we'll pass in a temp folder, tmp foo. And I think we'll also browse into that temp folder once it's created, tmp foo. All right, it seems that we're missing node. That's no good. Uh, let's do a quick Google and see what's happening here. So I found there's a mismatch in the name in the package matter, node.js, you just need to rename it. So I'm gonna, copy this over and we're going to do sudo ln s usr bin node.js to usr bin node. This will rename node to that. And there we go. We've got express up and running and we're in our express version. The next thing we need to do is install our node packages. So npm install and this will install all the packages and we can just hit start. Now I want it to run on port 80 just to start off with. I don't have an SSL certificate. Ooh, that didn't work. S sudo npm install. Let's try that. So I don't have a, uh, I don't have NPM. I don't have a uh, port 3000 allowed in the firewall, but I do have port 80 and we don't have an SSL certificate. So let's uh, LS and let's, pico the app.js and if we have a look here it is running on port where is that it might not be this one for the server cat packages all right so we have to browse into our bin folder and to the www folder oh sorry we'll have to pico our www folder and here we have all the details. So in this case, I want the port set to 80. So let's do that over here. Great. Let's exit out of this and save it. Now, uh, since we didn't use sudo to exit out of this, it's not working. So I'm going to have to sudo pico www. 
Let's change that once more. We'll set that to eggity. Great. We'll save that CD back out and run sudo npm start. What you'll need to do is head over to the network card and over here you will get the external IP address because this one here is just the internal one. I'm going to copy this across and I'm going to paste this just over here. We're going to give this a test. Uh, let's open up a new browser here and paste this in and we can see that Express is up and running. And here we can see our logging is showing that it's loading the pages. So that's pretty cool.